I'm not sure if I should talk about this. There has been highs and there has been lows mm. in the entire uh, M1 year. So it's from you I got to know that there is a whole different world in France, right? <laughs> it's, so it's a big pressure for yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of nah, diversity, I would say it's like 70% French students. That's a very, very different ratio compared to what uh, we have in ESCP okay. actually. Had I got an option between ESCP or EDEC, I would have chosen. So welcome Sadat uh, and thank you so much man for uh, doing this video with me. Oh, it's my pleasure coming on your channel. <laughs> we, yeah, we have done a lot of videos together even Hello. before this. So it's it's been, a, it's been a long journey for us. So I know you, I've known you for quite some time now. Uh, for those who don't know you, who are watching you for the first time, could you introduce yourself and tell your story so far? Uh, I have uh, completed my undergrad from SRM. I was, uh, I've known Vikram since day one of my university undergrad days. We were roommates and uh, it started on 18th of uh, July 2016. <laughs> you, you remember the day? Yeah, that's the day <laughs> our uh, college started. Once I completed my undergrad, I decided on uh, working for a few years to get some professional experience. I did it with TCS. And after one and a half years or two years, I decided it's time to move on and move on to my next journey. And I joined EDEC for mm -hmm. my MIM program. Mm -hmm. I completed my M1, M1 year yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And uh, today my gap year officially starts. So I have until September 2024 uh -huh. uh, when my M2 year will start. I came to France immediately after my graduation. And uh, I remember you used to like... We used to stay in touch and you yeah, used to exactly. ask a lot of questions about the curriculum and everything. Yeah. And yeah, I'm really happy that you're here in France now and uh, you're studying in one of the best schools in France. Like you said, you finished your M1 now. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious to know, like, how has your overall experience has been with EDEC for M1? Uh, has it lived up to the expectations that you had? Before coming here, I did not set up a lot of expectations, uh, which a lot of international students uh, do. They have uh, higher expectations from the school. Mm -hmm. So to sum it up in one word, it has been a great ride for last nine months. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's more like a sinusoidal wave. There has been highs and there has been lows mm -hmm. in the entire uh, M1 year. But uh, my expectations from the school, the professors, the peer group, everything matched. So I don't have really something to complain about the school mm -hmm. in general. But uh, there has been challenges which we might discuss further into the podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Okay. I mean, I can imagine like I, I feel no journey is very linear. Yeah, like, exactly. know, there's always some sort of ups and downs yeah, for sure. So. so how has your experience been with uh, the professors and the peers in your okay. in your class? Okay. So uh, coming from India, uh, we have a very different education system in France. Mm. So the system put up here is more about you have been given all the resources. It's up to you how much you extract from it. Mm. Uh, if I compare it with Indian uh, undergrad, uh, system it's more like they would force feed you everything and they expect you that you learn and you replicate that same thing in the finals uh, so it's very different over here and in terms of professors uh, there is a mix of professors so there are few uh, most of the professors at TEDx have something of their own uh, by which I mean they are not tenured professors at TEDx Few of them have their own consulting firms which they run independently they might have been CFOs or uh, uh, finance directors or strategy director for many years in corporate world and then they decided to retire from that and open up their own firm in France or Belgium for that matter and they it's more like a passion for them to teach the kids so there are a few professors like that and they are very approachable at edX we have something known as my edX so we have a learning platform and each subject has a forum so if you have any doubts or anything you could just post on it and 100% some or the other professor would reply to it, okay. so which is really nice. And uh, peer group, uh, it's a bit difficult to integrate uh, with the peer group. Uh, so what I've listened from you about TACP is that there are a lot of international students. But at EDEC, it's quite different. At EDEC, uh, the international students would be somewhere around 200 mm -hmm. uh, for the MIM batch, mm -hmm. uh, which includes anybody who is not from who is not from France. So anybody okay. apart from French nationality mm. is international. Mm -hmm. And there are around 600 or 550 French students. For us to communicate with them is a big 
problem model for them because uh, it's I feel it's not because of the cultural differences. It's like we both are excited to learn the cultural differences amongst us, but it's more like the language itself is a barrier for us to mm. communicate. And associations are a big part of EDEC. So okay. we have some associations which are present for now 60 years now. Oh, wow. 60, that's, 70 that's years. Time, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, and they host some big competitions. So mm. recently we had an event. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember the club association's name. So they are the sailing club association. Mm -hmm. So they hosted a 2 million euros competition in West. Wow in France. Wow. So it's a, it was a very big event. Okay. A lot of the professors and the admin team also went to the event. But in terms of diversity of the class, yeah. would you say that the class is very diverse? Which other nationalities do you have in your class? Okay. In terms of na diversity, I would say it's like 70% French students in a class. So uh, at EDEC, we would have roughly around 40 students in a class. Mm -hmm. And out of that, around 70 would be French. Then I would say... 10% would be Chinese, 5% mm -hmm. uh, as Indians, and okay. the rest 5 would be Italian, Germans, mixed oh, wow. Spanish as well. That's a very, very different ratio compared to what uh, we have in ESCP okay. actually. During our M2 year, a lot of the French students go to their exchange universities. Mm -hmm. So the ratio changes very differently, very drastically. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, students coming in only for the MSCs. So those are the students which gets added up to the RM2 year. So we mix a lot more and the ratio is much more balanced out uh, during then. So we'll have a lot of more Spanish, a lot of more Italians, mm -hmm. few less French, Indian, mm -hmm. Chinese, it's all mixed up. That's so right. it's much more easier to integrate during the M2 year, which I've seen. So a lot of the MSc students tell that they had a much better experience in the peer side to communicate and make friends and go out, hang mm -hmm. out, uh, compared to the M1 students. Okay. Kudos to EDEC, they do facilitate uh, things like this. So we have some events during our M1 year, which was so aimed for the international students. We used to get called up and there mm. were some French students as mm. well. So we could have games together mm. and we could better communicate and integrate with them. The next question that I had, and that is why France, why EDEC? Okay, uh, so you were the first one I knew. So it's from you I got to know that there is a whole different world in France, right? So <laughs> it's a big pressure for yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. So back in India, most of the people prefer to go to US or UK, Australia. These are the chosen destinations, right? So it's uh, we have been taught English since our childhood. So for us, it's much more easier to make friends and integrate. Mm. And uh, but I was looking something, uh, I was looking for something, a course which would help me uh, transition from an engineering background to the business background. Mm -hmm. And uh, I cannot do MBA outside India currently because I don't have that kind of professional experience. It mm -hmm. would take me minimum five years, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the other option was uh, MIM, which I got introduced from you. So there were a few options. There were a few options in Australia. But if I go by the ranking, which a lot of Indians, a lot of people do go by. So lo most of the top schools were in France. Mm. And the biggest uh, advantage of uh, the French school, they have something known as gap year, which I can take. Yeah. So it's a big, uh, like it's a boon for people like us who are not coming from this background. So mm -hmm. we could find internships which will help you find uh, the study and internships or the CDI contract at the end of your course. I'm very happy mm -hmm. where I am. So I had pretty much uh, put my mind and soul into doing this mm -hmm. and I had few expectations and EDEC matched all of them. And to be honest, I visited your campus. It's really great. ESCP is really great. The course is great. But had I got an option between ESCP or EDEC, I would have still chosen EDEC. Because oh, I wow. am. Okay. Yeah. So it's a very big claim to make yeah. because a yeah. lot of people uh, are. Uh, <laughs> I guess a lot of people must message you like which is better I have received yeah. similar messages on LinkedIn and Instagram so, yeah. so but I would have chosen EDEC because I'm not someone who would be comfortable studying a year here and mm -hmm. then going to for a semester uh, exchange in 
the other EACP campus and then again coming back. You have to decide which college is exactly. good depending on your requirements, right? Every exactly. college has its own, own pros and cons. Yeah, exactly. Every college. And there's no there's no one school that is like the best school, I would say. Yeah, I mean, by ranking, yes, you can I tell mean, yeah, which is the best. Ranking right? is a whole other thing, yeah. right? Like it but keeps changing. One day one school is on the yeah. top, maybe after a few, few yes. years, it's, it it, it's changes. It's more like... Today, HS is at the top, maybe down the line, two years down the line, INSEAD could be at the top. Yeah. That does not make that INSEAD is the perfect uh, yeah. fit for you. For sure. You for really sure. need to make sure that uh, what are your expectations and is the school uh, is in line with your uh, goals or expectations, what you have from exactly. the entire uh, system. So, I got a chance to visit uh, Siddharth school, EDEC, in the Lille campus. So, EDEC also has other campuses, if I'm not wrong. Yes, right? they do have. But it's not a mandatory requirement for you to go and study in different uh, no, campus no, no, like no. ESCP. No. So, you can choose to go and study, it's up to you, but I mean, you have it, other campuses. It campus. really depends on the course, right? So, uh, we have many we have around three in France, one is in Singapore and one is in London. Mm -hmm. All right. So the three campuses in France, they all t have three different tracks of MIM. Mm -hmm. So what I am studying is MIM in the business management. The Nice campus is specialized for the finance courses. It only teaches MIM in financial economics. And then there is another program as GET G -E -T -T. So global economic transformation, something. I don't really know the full name. So that's taught in the Paris campus. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the academics part. Right? Okay. So let me start with my experience. My M1, especially semester one, okay. experience at ESCP was not that great. Uh, mainly because of the fact that in semester one, you have to study all the subjects together. It's mandatory mm -hmm. that you have like finance, HR, everything. And uh, naturally, you are not that much interested in some subjects and you're more focused on other yeah, subjects. Yeah, I mean, right? it happens with everybody. And then the semester two was amazing experience for me yeah. because that was when we had to choose a particular specialization. Okay. And we had to, uh, uh, like, study all the subjects related to that specialization. Okay. Maybe one or two extra subjects, yeah. but most of the 99% of the subjects were about that specialization. So that naturally made it more interesting yeah. because it's a specialization that I chose out of yeah, my interest. Exactly. So how was your uh, experience in M1 and how is your uh, academic uh, program split for M1? Okay, uh, so purely on basis of academics, I loved it for me uh, what stood out was the strategy course in the m1 year mm -hmm. was really great mm -hmm. so the the professor who taught us uh, is a dean of the gett track we discussed earlier mm -hmm. in paris so he used to travel from paris to lille oh, wow. <laughs> almost to every alternate man. day to teach the course wow. okay so it had been a, so basically during that course we had the marks for the class interaction and stuff so we used to Pre so you told me when I was not, I was back in India, I used to tell I am studying through my pre-reading materials for yeah. tomorrow's class. Yeah. So it's very similar, right? Okay. So we had the exact same thing. We had to do the case studies beforehand. We had to make a PPT and upload it. Okay. And the next day, any random group would be assigned to present it. Evaluate. Right? Okay. Exactly. And do you have like specializations as well? Or? No, not now. So okay. that's what the thing is in M1 year, it's a very, all the generalist courses. are. So the whole M1 is generalist. It's exactly. not like semester no, one. No, no, okay, no. The whole M1. Okay. One year. So, so give you a, to give you a split up, I can tell you the courses. I could list down the courses. So, in my semester one, I was taught MHC, uh, which is the HR course, then marketing management, then strategy and organization, and then we had FSA or in ESAP, which is known as IFRS. Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, corporate finance, and then I had a uh, elective, which was financial market economics. Okay. Those are the courses which I've done. Elective is your choice. Yeah, okay. elective is my choice. So. Anything I can, I can choose any of the electives. Okay. If I wanted to do fake news, I could do fake news. If I wanted to do something with blockchain, I could do that. Okay. It's up to me. Okay. So just because I wanted to do financial, want to get into financial market, that's the reason I chose that. And uh, for the second semester, which just ended yesterday, <laughs> uh, I had legal, I had uh, operations and project management, management of information systems, which not a lot of French students really appreciated and loved doing it because for me it was very easy mm. because the things which were being discussed in management of information systems, 
it's the exact same thing I've done during my work as in TCS. Uh-huh, okay. So it was very easy, easy to comprehend you. and understand. Mm. Then we had a cost accounting, which is culmination of IFRS or FSA and corporate finance together. And yeah, that's about it. And we had two other electives as well. Okay. So in terms of electives, I had chosen uh, one was uh, VBA and the other one was growth strategy. Okay. So, so basically your electives kind of act like a mini specialization yeah right. basically you, you choose so. the elective and then you you yeah. direct your whole yeah. academic in such exactly. a way that it so, helps you yeah. with your career so, well, a few of my friends are quite interested into luxury management mm. right so in the first year uh, in the first semester they chose just uh, the there was some course related to luxury in mm. the elective mm. and the second semester also they chose that okay and to complement it they did a growth strategy course so they know about the merger and acquisition and how mm-hmm. it works in the luxury sector. Mm-hmm. In the M2, I have a specialization here for nine months. Mm-hmm. So that is hardcore specialization. Special, so yeah. if I choose finance, they will only teach me finance courses. For the whole year, you choose one yeah, specialization? Exactly. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so it's very different from ACP. Exactly. Now that you have finished your M1 yeah. and you said that you have started your gaps M from exactly. today, <laughs> from today, this moment. Um, is it a mandatory thing that do you have to take a gap? Or is it yes. an option? So that is one thing which EDEC has made uh, is that they have made it mandatory to do the gap year. Okay. And for internship, uh, how much months or weeks of internship do you have to validate in order to graduate? We need to do nine months of internship. Okay. Uh, so nine is, I think, like what, 36 weeks? Yeah. It's interesting that they kind of like, you know, have a structure uh, in EDEC that you have to take it and you have to pursue this yeah, internship. I mean, the thing with gap year is it starts uh, today's I guess sixth of May. My exams got finished on fifth of May. Mm-hmm. Right from sixth of May, I have until thirtieth of August twenty twenty four. So I really have more than a year mm. to complete nine months of internship. Yeah, I mean it will help you with your hunt. Exactly, like internship hunt. So I think we should not be hell bent that okay, I have taken a year off or it's never a year off it's more than a year for everybody even Mm. for you you had two months of free time yeah front and back so we should not be hell-bent on making sure that we start the moment my final exams get over because Mm. you are not going to get it that's Mm. the thing in france what i've realized the recruitment there are few recruitment slots so they generally hire in jan march july and september so there are few companies who do not hire in July and if it is one of your dream companies, you cannot get in, mm. no matter how hard you try. Mm-hmm. So there is no point taking that kind of stress for that. With your internship hunt yeah. uh, so far, how is it? how has it been? And also uh, the fact that you had prior work experience of yeah. two years, is it actually working in favor for you? To be honest, it is very difficult to judge with the prior work experience. Uh, at EDEC, there are currently students who have just graduated last year and have they have got internships already. Mm-hmm. They were the first ones to get internships. Who have graduated? Yeah. They so have, that's no, like end of study internship? No, no. Or? They have graduated. They completed their undergrad in 2022. Okay. Yeah. And they joined EDEC in 2022. Ah, who don't have work ex. Yeah. They ah, do not have any kind of work got... experience, right? Okay. And they have got uh, internships. internships. Okay. And then on other hand, there is a guy who I cannot name, but he has got an internship as a business analyst who has work experience for two and a half years. Mm-hmm. So you really cannot pinpoint that it would help or not. Mm-hmm. But what I have felt in my personal journey is that the fact that I've worked and I know have gained some skills out of it, it has helped me in the interviews. So basically your work experience is kind of like an additional resource that exactly. you have it, on top of the of subjects whatever. that you are studying. Exactly. So, so that now, might help. Yeah. yeah. So in my personal uh, work experience, in TCS, you, uh, my client was in the insurance industry. Mm. So that's what I pitched to the companies right now that, hey, I worked as a external client for an insurance company and I have helped them in the claims domain and I also know about the claims accounting and the, how the Uh, policies are being registered and I basically have a very good overview about different uh, products Mm. so uh, what I suggest even I think you would also agree 
whenever you are working we should more focus more about the product rather products rather than the processes which are involved mm-hmm. so it's a product the knowledge about the product itself which will help you get the next internship or the job mm-hmm. processes do help those are your hard skills mm-hmm. but the products is the main thing mm-hmm. so that is what i'm pitching right now yeah. to wrap up this whole session yeah. uh, i have one last question for you yeah. so what would your recommendation or suggestions be to someone who is looking forward to uh, studying at edec the first thing which i would suggest is lot of students message me stating a hey, will be as you said would i get an internship and then the second uh, thing is do i get a part time job so the first thing uh, anybody who is planning on coming to edec just let's just remove edec from the equation for a moment if anybody is coming planning on coming to france please research about the place where you are going the institution you are joining before even attempting to apply or uh, planning on coming right so there are a lot of things which are not very similar to us or canada so you cannot expect things which are happening in canada you can get those stuff done over here it's mm. not possible mm. but at edec i would say my experience has been great uh, but Uh, as i said uh, told you earlier the uh, the major thing is it's about keeping your expectations in line with uh, what the reality mm-hmm. right but the first and foremost thing is think whether the school values and what the school is giving you matches with your goal that's the ultimate thing let's wrap up the video here sidar yeah. thank you so much for your time and sharing all this information it was really insightful and i think a lot of people uh, would actually get value from these kind of videos you know exactly so, uh, and i think the whole idea behind me making these videos is that I, w- i want to share all the experiences that we have had so that it can be helpful for other people yeah. so thanks a lot Thank and you so much. Uh, i'm going to put siddharth's uh, linkedin down in the description below so if you have any specific questions related to edec uh you feel free to reach out to him and if you have yeah. questions related to um, escp you can also reach out to me um so yeah that's all for this video guys if you found this video useful then hit that like button and consider subscribing and i will catch up with you all in the next one till then goodbye bye bye